Treatment of HIV has a long history. The life expectancy of a person with HIV nears that of a person not living with HIV. Yet challenges remain regarding therapy, including tolerability, long-term adverse effects, and drug-drug interactions. In this Contagion Peer Exchange panel discussion, I'm joined by specialists who are experts in managing and understanding HIV infections. We will review available HIV treatments, discuss emerging agents and novel management approaches. I am Joseph Iran. I'm a professor of medicine in the Division of Infectious Disease at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill School of Medicine, which is in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I'm joined by Allison Agu, uh, Associate Professor of Pediatric and Adult uh, Infectious Disease at John Hopkins University School of Medicine that's in Baltimore, Maryland. Dr. Ian Frank, Professor of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania, Perlman School of Medicine in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Dr. Colleen Kelly, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Infectious Diseases at Emory University School of Medicine, Atlanta, Georgia. And Dr. Julia Marcus, Infectious Disease Epidemiologist and Assistant Professor in the Department of Population Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare Institute in Boston, Massachusetts. Thank you, and let's begin. Terrific. Um, so let's start um, first just by talking about kind of HIV incidence and prevalence. Julia, where, where are we in the United States? Yeah, the CDC estimates there are about 1.1 million people living with HIV in the U.S. And in terms of incidence, there are nearly 40,000 new HIV infections each year. And that's pretty much plateaued since about 2013. We've kind of stalled in terms of HIV yeah, prevention. Yeah, I mean, we were progress. going down, right? Yep. And, 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 and now it's kind of flat. It's pretty flat. Um, there are some groups in which incidence is decreasing. Um, about 70% of the new infections are among men who have sex with men. And then within that group, um, HIV rates are declining in white men who have sex with men, but mm -hmm. not so much in other groups. Um, right. And they are actually increasing in some groups, like in Latino MSM. Yeah, it seem, seems like in women, for example, we're, we're actually seeing a decline. Is that right? I think so. And then I think there are differences by age as well, um, with uh, increases in the youngest age groups um, and uh, either flat flatlining or declines in other groups. Yeah. Unfortunately, the young yeah. people seem to be a constant, about 25% of new infections and overall not really making a dent into that. And it's different in different parts of the country, kind of where we live. It's a little different, right, Colleen? Right. So the southeastern United States is really um, where the epidemic has shifted over the last decades, uh, where we still see very high rates of HIV incidence and prevalence, especially in communities of color and of poverty um, and very concentrated epidemics, both urban and rurally. Yeah. To, just to emphasize that point, though, the CDC has divided the country into four regions, South, Northeast, Midwest, and West Coast. And there are as many infections in the South as all of the other regions combined. And there are many uh, sociological and political reasons for that. Sure. Um, and I think it's a really important thing for us to be aware of and to consider uh, in making public health decisions in this country. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we're, we're thinking about people who have HIV, we kind of have kind of acute infection and then we have chronic infection. Um, and looking at people that are present with acute infection, what, what do we see, Allison? Yeah. So, I, you know, what I think is interesting is about probably about 50 percent of people, maybe even more, when you talk to them when they've been diagnosed, you ask them, did you have the flu or some weird, you know, in July have the, the flu? And they'll say, oh, yeah, I, I remember I got this flu-like illness. They may present with fever, chills, muscle aches. They may have rashes. Really present with the flu. Right. quote unquote, but it's a viral illness and it's their acute represent presentation for, uh, with HIV. And oftentimes they seek medical care and are treated for the flu, right? Mm -hmm. um, or you know, sent home with symptomatic management. And that's when they actually could have been tested and diagnosed their HIV. So it's, a, it's an opportunity and important for us to recognize that people can present like that. Many people have, have no symptoms, right? Sure. But really the, it, that, that is an opportunity to identify and get people engaged yeah, in care. In, in North Carolina, in uh, uh, 10 years ago, we. We had our acute infection project, and the most common diagnosis was Rocky Mountain spotted fever, mm -hmm. the most common first diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a it's an issue because it's an opportunity because of transmission, right? I mean, yeah. 
I often, I oftentimes say, you know, when you have the flu, we all go for a TLC. People have flu sex. It's a perfect opportunity <laughs> to transmit. <laughs> no. Your viral load's very high, high at that right, time, right, and so right. in that in that place, if we identify people, we can actually intervene potentially and prevent transmission. Ian, still seeing acute infection and. In Philadelphia? I would say we're seeing more acute infections in Philadelphia than we have historically. And maybe it's because we have better methodologies to identify individuals coming into the emergency room as having acute HIV. We're doing some rapid testing. We're, we're getting our ED physicians to do viral load testing in people who are uh, at risk for HIV acquisition. So I think we've, uh, we've, we've helped our ED faculty become a little bit more sensitive to that diagnosis. Uh, and so we're seeing about one new infection a, a month, uh, one new acute, acute infection, infection a month. Uh, but Allison, what about how patients commonly present in your practice? What, what, do, you, what do you see in Baltimore? Yeah, so I mean, so I, I am both adult and pediatric, so I see the range, right? Um, and I'd say commonly people are detected because just somebody happened to do a test, right? So they, they're asymptomatic. And so people who are in that stage of in infection where they're not acute, but they're not at the end stage HIV. And so they just may have gotten a test part of Job Corps or part of some regular screening, which is why screening is so important. And we're gonna talk about that later. And they may, when you actually ask them, they may have had some swollen lymph nodes. They may have, oh, I just haven't felt great. I've had these rashes. I felt tired. They may talk about yeast infections that they're women that they've been having. Um, just sort of non-specific things a lot of them may be having. Some night sweats, some, but, a lot of times, again, asymptomatic is the way they present, which is why it's so important to, um, to test people. And then as people progress with you know, more immunosuppression, they may have opportunistic infections may present that way. And unfortunately, we still do see quite a few number of people who present at the end where their CD4 is lower than 200, where they may have pneumocystis pneumonia, they may have cryptococcus, and we happen to see that again some deficits in our healthcare system or them sure. not being engaged. So we do see that. So we really do see the range. Yeah. Lots of times there's missed opportunities to test those people, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think anytime you look at someone who's diagnosed late um, in the course of their inf infection and you look back, you often see that they've touched the healthcare system multiple times. Then there were missed opportunities for mm -hmm. diagnosis where, you know, we could have e intervened early on and preserved their, um, you know, their health as well as reduce their risk of transmission mm -hmm. to partners.